to talk about landscape porosity, let's cordially welcome Coach Akon Borakum. Welcome, Hi. Coach. Hi, Salika. We hope you are well in Bangkok. Yes. At the moment. Okay, yes. everybody. Yes, let's now listen to Coach as she shares her presentation. So, Coach, we are ready whenever you are. Yes, thank you for having me and hi to everyone around the world and especially in Malaysia. I'm actually here with you from Bangkok. I would like to share my presentation. Okay, so we're just going to wait a little bit more and that's all right. You know, this is quite common whenever we do a virtual congress. Okay, coach, now we are ready for you. Yes, coach, we're ready for you. Yes, um, actually... I um, was I was listed as a 15 woman leading fight against climate change, and and also actually was named as um, Tom Hundred Next. So honored to be a female from Southeast Asia to to be to be in this recognition and the Green 30 for 30 from Bloomsburg. and I would like to encourage you if you have time to listen to my TED talk. And I was really honored to be a keynote speaker for UN in several um, event. And at the time, I was a little bit like skeptical, like why landscape architect, why me talking into like all these government people. And yes, last year was like BBC Hundred, and yes, um, last year was reward um, award from the National Bank Solution to increase urban adaptability from the UN. I taught and we, right before COVID, I was have chance to working with Professor Neil Kirkwood from Harvard to bring the students from GSD to Thailand. And I think that was kind of like the end and the pandemic happened. Um, the person cannot be divorced from the profession. We teach who we are in terms of darkness as well as light. I think this is such a really important. And when we talk about landscape, we talk about change. And I'm, I'm from the Buddhist land. And I think the law of karma is just like, is really related to, to the landscape and our destination and its consequence. I would like to start my presentation with this map. It's actually really telling who we are and where we're from. So like Bangkok considered as like a new um, geology um, areas and we actually wasn't exist in the map, right? In the past, but the present day with the um, um, Geologic towns moving through the fresh water and the salt water is actually create a land. And the city of Bangkok is probably only the um, age for like 200 years ago. And this is um, how we live um, with um, the wetland and the marshland. And this is how we survive our flood with um, the boat race rather than just call it disaster. And this is like the image that we actually, I, I found this is just like a, a people with attitude for flooding. So I just feel that this is such a um, big change when it's come to the 2011 with the great flood. Um, like narrative of the flooding and our living is actually um, different. So, Natural disaster, expected, unexpected. I think I got the topic of how to work with the unexpected. I would like to also mention a bit about the picket um, human ecology diagrams, like how we are like a human ecosystem and how we deal with the green part is like the eco structure, socio economics, and um, how we are part of it. 
I recently just have a conversation with my mentor, um, Dr. Denai Taitaku, and kind of like adapt the understanding of um, picket um, human ecosystem diagrams into like reality after the pandemic. So what if we shift or adapt uh, those relationship that kind of human are still part equally to the social and um, sociology and the, the landscape and actually really based on the footprint that we are on and the social economics and the culture is actually built upon the footprint that we have, the landscape. And, and in so many times that we forget, um, this is the landscape that we're building our city upon. And this is how we are looking right now in Bangkok, which is like very flat, Delta city, close to sea level rise, and also a lot of flooding from the north. So the water is actually coming from all directions. And right now, when you see the ecology that we're basing on, it's actually not like a big um, foundation that we thought we are living on. But right now, it has been squeezed with this type of like urbanization. And I'm sure that this thing applies into many cities in our region or around the world. And I just feel that right now, we are tipping point that all the structure that we understand that is like the foundation of our living, like money, ecology, like ecosystem, um, economics, social, um, social structure is actually collapsed right now because the foundation is probably disproportion. And of course, it's come to an unexpected. Living is unexpected. I'm actually really questioning, are we really, um, living in unexpected or living with ignorance. This is the Thai COVID um, uh, numbers today. We got 20,000 more infected cases. Um, today, Thai people died from COVID 312. Um, person is quite scary, but I'm still asking, is this thing unexpected? We actually export so much electronic waste and plastic waste. We, ex we um, export a lot of rice and many other things, but we import with all this thing, which um, is coming from China, Canada, New Zealand, some part of from Malaysia as well, Japan. I don't know what, I'm, what we are doing right now. Are uh, this thing unexpected? It's actually expected in every rainfall in in the city of bangkok uh we expected a drought is actually happened but last year was the worst drought we ever experienced um, from the 50 years period so this is we living in the delta city and outline in the yellow is bangkok and this is a great flood from 2011 um, this is unexpected, but it's happened 10 years already, 2021. Uh, we still feel that it is going to come again. So I just feel that the unexpected that we are thinking is actually we know exactly what's going to happen in the future or with this pandemic is another call. So basing our um, landscape and our development the whole city, our life on GDP is actually even not even mentioned about the landscape, the real footprint that we are living on and basing on like this GDP, burning gas, being in the traffic, the GDP is going up, staying home with family, GDP is going down. I think the voice measurement is actually a little off and we are keeping on doing that. So we are at the point adapt or die. <coughs> Thank you.
think the high tide, for example, the the sea level is already higher than Bangkok. That under sea level, like um, Amsterdam, like some part of Japan, or many other city. But I just feel that um, the ecology of the setting is so different. And there are layer of clay, sand, clay and sand. We don't have any rock layer. Some area, especially Bakati area, have been sunk for one meter already. We don't know so much about our natural waterways, which is canal. So that's is that's mean we neglect about how the water will drain. So I just feel that with all these problems, what can we do as landscape architects and definitely what can we do as a built environment professions that are related to, to what's going on right now. So last four years, I finished a park um, called Chilongo Centenary Park, which is like the first new park in 30 years of Bangkok City, which is a little scary to say that this is like this is part, part of the solution that can be replica in other city or in within the city that we need more space, more place to hold the water. So what if the canal was gone? What if the um all the wet all this um wetland is being covered through the concrete? Um, are we expect something unexpected? Yes, definitely. We have to like really learn how to live with um, natural change or what I we may call natural so disaster. Be done and we need to act faster. We have to be very more action oriented rather than just keep all this research of climate change with, with our child. So the policy maker or the community have to come together. It's a good start, but it's not definitely not enough. So yeah, this is actually facing with your fear. And uh, I think it's so much fear living in this at risk city. And I'm not only talking about Bangkok, but I'm using Bangkok as uh, the window to too many other city that confronting um, the same challenging challenges and I'm sure that is um, become just a new normal for us. So this is like Centenary Park is actually right downtown Bangkok and at the time it's a lot of conversation about what should this land become? Should it become another shopping mall because the land cost 7,000 million US at the time when it was built? And there are so many other options. But as a university of, of, of the first university of Thailand, I think we able to convince for, for the value of what this land should become. And this is such a um, first piece of introducing our landscape architecture work in, in my city that this park is uh, not only just for recreation, but it's, it's actually for a future of the city or the present of the city that we are talking about water and we have to. So you can see like this huge concrete and this Chula Centenary Park is actually inclined. So Bangkok is so flat, so we incline the whole park um, using this structure of architecture to create the park topographies using the wetland. This is like really normal plant that used to grow in the landscape, but as, as a citizen, I hardly see all these like 
this plant and also with the incline it's actually serving the social um activities and the urban space that we actually needed in this city and normally if we want to confront um the uncertainty with fear i feel that we build dams and it's actually creating another problem and this is such a solution that been applied all over the place not even just in my country so i just feel that how can we live with fear but not based on fear and this is a centenary park and wetland retention pond how can we create a um, new narrative that we are part of the water don't fear of getting wet you're gonna get wet anyway because we are delta city and if you remember it's like the first how the land was created is through the water and i'm so honored that the u.n secretary um, mr antonio guterres came and gave a big support to me as a local designer as a um, local um, solution changing a narrative is another thing that's so important and i think it's like our work as a landscape architect this is the biggest urban rooftop farm in asia and it's actually in Thammasat University. I think ha um, having worked with um, many universities is actually hoping to change the narrative to the younger generation. But also this work itself is actually fixing many problems of the waste space in the city, like the, the left unused concrete in such an urban dense area. Um, how can landscape create work in such an all occupied city like Bangkok? And I just feel that how it have to we have to rethink that the first day of the productivities of this land is used to go food for us is and is working in so many things. So this building is actually um, become a, like another mountain, but it's not like a mountain that you move from other place, but the mountain that um this waste space actually can create more um notion of food security saving energy from, from from the buildings using solar roof to when the water drain down to this rice paddy field and it will restore in the full retention pond and this um, rooftop is actually pump up the water and it's actually the best um classroom outdoor for for the younger generation and this is on the rooftop where it's actually create us urban heat island pm 2.5 and many other things we're supposed to know that where our food come from because food industry actually destroy our environment badly and yes is a little bit crazy in construction we work closely with um, architects called us on sin and the university and yes, using renewable energy and touch many aspects of the climate change in just one work. And yes, and what I feel really honor is slow down 20 times of the runoff. So rather than flooding the city, it's actually slow down and give us good food, organic. And last year it was awarded as the year best architect from Architecture A Plus Award, which is such a realm of architecture. I think this is another thing is um, that landscape architects and architects or urban designers have to destroy this boundary and work together and come on, coming up with more innovations. And I feel really honored that um, the work of landscape architects is actually being recogni recognized with the architect's world. And whatever sustainability award is got our top sustainability award. And the other world working with um, Bangkok Governor Aswin and urban designer architects and all the teams. We actually, um, this is like a forgotten infrastructure 40 years ago. Like I don't even recognize this infrastructure. It's called amputated bridge. Um, in Bangkok, and it's actually finished right after COVID. 
um, lockdown in Bangkok, and we and team actually turning with um, BMA to um, to turn this um, like unused, um, somewhat I don't know about the corruptions, but maybe yes. But this unused forty years amputated bridge to become the first park across the river in any capitals is actually not feasible in london that cinnamon foster tried to do but since we already built it for 40 years why don't we use it so with this narrow narrow nest and we create a um, public space that people can go up there and hang out you you guys are welcome after bangkok reopened with the after COVID. Um, right now, um, the locals like really enjoy the view of the river, and actually, um, we raise up the whole structure, and it's such an important location that um, this is the first bridge that's for feet, not for wheels, and it's connect all the surrounding, and it's how we build a walkable city by using the example of the urban landscape work to be part of this, raising up to protect from the uh, air pollutions. And this is such a really like nice scene in Bangkok that um, we don't experience much with the river. The wellness um, leftover unused that, um, um, helipad and using the waste from the hospital to be part of the design. We can use urban farming in terms of a healing process. And I think that landscape architects can convey so many solutions for clients. A parks, a many um, urban farm rooftop, and mutate. Mutate is actually like, um, how can we reclaim back our great infrastructure, which is already occupied every inches of this land to be unbreathable. This is the canal in the past. Right now it's become the canal in CBD. Right now what we understand about canal is like, it's not a place for life, a place for transportation, but it's only a place for sewage way. So I'm working with my team, land processor, working closely with um, Bangkok governor just to turn this first canal in Bangkok. How can the natives of the East don't even think about revitalize the canal? This actually is gonna happen, the first canal in Bangkok, that's um, right now the sewage way. And how can we change the mindset of those who manage our city that canal is, is for runoff, and but it's not for those sewage. Right now in Bangkok, we use a combined system. And when the combined system overloading with pouring rain, all this thing is actually pouring down to the canal. So the graphic looks really basic, but just move that overflowing into the ground and create a proper pipe. And I think that this is very easy, but changing the mindset of people is pretty much taking a lot of time. And I'm glad that as part of the team, landscape architects can convey and convince. And hopefully when the pandemic is over and when the tourist is back again, we will see this canal. And thinking, talking about the city as a network. We are also working to the existing park. This is like a central park of um, Thailand. And it's the first public park in the nations and is gonna have it um, three year anniversary and how can we re re revitalize this exist um, nature infrastructure to become even more healthier for the city. Well, I would like to end my presentation with compassion and I just feel that it is so important that we as a human, not even just think about landscape architects, should practice more and extend our work beyond our safe zone. What is um, the, the client that actually um, hire the design profession is only like 10% in the world. What about the other 90% of population of the world? They actually need designer and actually need helps as well. And I'm working a lot with Canal community, building the housing um, solutions. How can they not be in this place? Climate change will displace millions of people. But how can we working with that problems with younger generations 
um, with the inland flood plain, we actually using our tools to explain that this is the flood plain. Um, we actually um, settle in the wrong place. If we need, if we want to be here, we need to adapt. And if you if you build dam, it's gonna flood even more to the lower um, community, our neighbor, and it's gonna flood yourself from the behind. The water is coming from all direction. What is this structure is actually for? It's actually useless. Four hundred million baht. Don't get it. <laughs> so we're actually using such a basic uh, with my team actually around here, using working um, relentlessly. Um, explaining what we're gonna get with this budget. You not get, not even get the money at all, but you're gonna get all this structure and the life's gonna change forever. Even you not exist, all this infrastructure still exists be um, after us. So I just feel that um, it's actually our duty to stop, not only just to create, but just to stop and find the right solution and really, finding the right relationship with um, humans and the environment once again. And this is um, the cartoon uh, from the famous McKay. And I just feel that we are fighting with recession, recession but it's actually about climate change. And if it's, and right now it's become biodiversity collapse and we're not gonna be able, our humanity, how, um, homo sapien will extinct. So as a landscape architect and as a chairwoman from climate change working group of IFLA, I actually want to promote my another session tomorrow with all my friends from around the globe who are also caring about the climate change. We actually got approved from the IFLA about the climate action commitment two days ago from James and Collins and from the Exco. And we want to put this thing this is probably a de decoration, but not for the decoration's sake, it's for action. And I hope that all of you here will come with us. And I think we're gonna create this action as a commitment to really fix the problems. Thank you, I'm done. Thank you, Koch, for showing us why we need to address the hydrological process in our cities. Thank you again, Coach, and we do look forward to your session tomorrow, and I'll tell the viewers to make sure they tune in. Okay, see you again, Coach.